So this is our Empathy Circle work group. Uh, everyone gets uh, 15 minutes to share about uh, facilitating Empathy Circles, and Carolina will now talk about her experiences. So actually, I would like to speak about two things. So one are Empathy Circles in Poland, and second is the project, the, 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 the thing we do together with Marta, since I know she wants to focus on something else, maybe I will share that. Um, so about empathy circle, circles in Poland, uh, I'm trying to be persistent, very systematic. So uh, I have this habit of announcing empathy circle every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And I repeat this formula every time and it become kind of, you know, like a, a, re a refrain. And I think it's good because it's stuck with my, I hope it's stuck uh, in minds of uh, other people. And there are people who are coming back to Empathy Circles and, and they say, oh, that's great that you're still doing it after half a year, for example. <laughs> so I feel encouraged of doing it because, you know, sometimes I have this feeling like, do I feel good to, to facilitate today empathy circle? Sometimes, you know, I don't feel uh, in good shape. But lately it kind of become more people and more people in those empathy circle. I do not record them because I kind of recognize that people don't want to be recorded. Most of those empathy circles are very intimate. And I accept that. I have few recordings and I can share them. I have them on Facebook or on YouTube and that's okay. I don't have to record every meeting. For me, it's important that people feel comfortable doing empathy circle and, and want to participate and that's, I feel like this rule, I remember Bill saying once, we have to be persistent. And it's kind of, I see kind of effect of being persistent every week, the same day, the same hour, and people kind of remember that and coming. So that's one thing, and I feel good about it. Uh, about the project we do with Marta, uh, we, uh, so Marta feel free to join my, uh, time and to, to, to add anything to that. So, uh, we, um, try, we, well, uh, as a member of global support, I, uh, um, facilitate open region calls that are regular empathy circles. Now it's every uh, two weeks, but I think that soon we will start to do that every week, every Thursday. It's in different time that is convenient for Asia, Australia. We want to bring to more time zone. And that, uh, I don't know, pull attention of uh, some people in global support and they are asked uh, us to, to organize uh, facilitators training for uh, Australian team. There were two, how many people? We have six, seven people, I think. Yeah. And seven. Yeah, seven people. And uh, we do that step by step. We start with, we are lucky because most of them are um, involved somehow in uh, some forms of therapy. So they have some skills. It's easier to work with them. And we perform one session, which was a regular empathy circle, and we explained the method. And then the second meeting was about facilitation. We again facilitate regular empathy circle. 
but the topic was facilitation and we were sharing some knowledge we already have with Marta and also let them express their concerns, their worries, whatever comes to their mind. And we were discussing facilitation. Next step is to try facilitate with, with our support. So that's the next step the the participants will do uh, we let them do organize themselves we uh, gave them some materials we produced for this purpose and we were trying to try how it works we try to model it that's how we trying to do that. We will see how it works. Marta, would you like to add something to that? Thank you, Karina. Yeah, I mean, it's the first run of a, a training and, you mm -hmm. know, and we'll finish it and I suppose then the materials will change as well as we modify them based on what we're learning and then it'll be, you know, put out, I suppose, to you as a community to uh, have input into it and improve it as mm -hmm. well. So the it's because it's six of them or it was seven if there were some other people we've done the first empathy circle with both groups and we've done the first the, the second session so the facilitation training and empathy circle session with one of the groups so we still need to do that session it's been recorded you know so they can keep the recording of that as well for themselves if they want to watch it again because it is very very rich um but then we still need to do that session with the second group and then it's up to them really to book it with us because it's one-on-one -on -one really they, they need to find a group that they want to facilitate and, and bring this in yeah and ultimately that's a big part of what we were telling them as well and insisting with them is that they need to create a support group like this for themselves as they go yeah that's the fourth fourth step yeah i forgotten to say so, that that's important yeah yeah so third step is facilitating with an experienced facilitator there to support you in doing it and then the fourth step uh, is having your own support team that ideally would already be there because i suppose they will end up being probably the support team of each other but even if they didn't have someone there to yeah help them create one yeah yeah hello um, I'm curious in your training if you did any uh, role playing or practicing of uh, difficult kind of facilitation situations. No, we didn't do play rolling, role playing. Okay. I think it's too early for them to 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 to, to, to kind of deal with role playing. They have to try a simple facilitation kind of experience that feel familiar comfortable with the process and then we can try to challenge each other <laughs> well and and one of the aspects of role playing is that the role player can either do a very mild light uh difficulty or you know very challenging uh difficulties that's one of the things that the variables that can be introduced into it yeah Marta. I think that's actually a thing that we had, like, let's say the, the people that they pick to be there on this, their own first go at facilitating, if it is being too easy, if the people they pick and all of it is too easy, we could have pre-agreed that if that happens, that we might introduce a light challenge. Like, you know, it's, it's a good idea to consider. Yeah. I saw Anne uh, raising hand. You are muted, Anne. And you are no, muted. I was Anne. just propping my head up. Sorry. Okay. Any other questions? Can you explain what is the role play? I, I don't know of the variations of the process. Lo, would you explain? Sure. So, uh, uh, so I've kind of seen in the facilitating that I've done certain kinds of problems that show up regular, you know, pr predictably, like um, somebody who, instead of reflecting back what the person says they start commenting on what the person says or adding information or asking questions about it or 
uh, complimenting the person on what a great person they are or something like that. That would be one kind of thing. Another would be someone saying, you know, well, I don't really like this process. Uh, I, I don't like having a time limit or I don't, I don't want to do what you're asking me to do. Uh, th those are a couple of them. And I, I, I made up a list of about, I don't know, 20 different things. Um, some things that listeners do, some things that speakers do, some things that facilitators do um, that are things that could be um, acted out. We actually add your list to our materials. Yeah, okay. Guillaume, and it's a way of practicing how to respond to those kinds of situations. Uh, sorry, I did cut my yeah. What? I just said it's, the role playing is a way to practice how to respond to those kinds of situations. Oh, it's practice for facilitators. It's not a different process in the empathy circle. Right. Okay. No, no, no. No. Okay. Um, it's kind of the... challenging a uh, facilitator in kind of safe space. But I imagine you, you play with the rules. Like um, in the group we were in with Bob, we twisted a few times the rules. Like sometimes we did, well, partly what Lou just said, but uh, it was accepted and um, maybe it did not help, but it was useful. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like the, in your view, the process is strict or we can sometimes uh, play with it a little. Is that a question? Marta? Marta? I am trying to understand. Uh, I, Guillaume, do you mean play with it with what purpose? Uh, the, the, if Bob was here, it would be more simple. Uh, for example, mm. at one time I was interacting with someone. No, it was uh, my turn to speak. And I asked um, if I can, instead of only speaking and for the other one, to reflect, I could a little bit um, deepen the subject by asking some questions, like more direct interaction, but still in the, the shape of the empathy circle. But we were um, talking about the same team and having the same kind of um, issues. And um, so Bob was facilitating, only put thumbs up. So he said, yes, do it. And it was great. It was really great. <laughs> It doesn't suck. You, you can ask Ben, who is here. He, he was part of that. He, he is the guy I did that with. Yeah, I find that valuable too. I think the main, the main thing that I found valuable was like the opportunity to be creative within the rules. So there were like opportunities to kind of like, you know, choose who, who reflects you. So, you know, you choose the same person who, who, who had just reflected you back. And, um, you know, there, there were opportunities like that. I would say that I'm against such uh, losing the rules for very simple reason. I know that sometimes we feel incomplete because we couldn't ask questions and we didn't get answer. But first of all, we have the opportunity to do that when, it's our t when there is our turn. That's the moment we can get involved with our view, with our questions, with our doubt, whatever comes. That's first thing. Second thing, if we, uh, if we uh, interrupt with our ideas, it's, for me, this is very subtle process when where we respect each other space and each other's boundary we don't force anybody to respond to our question we can ask this question but this question might stay unanswered it's a choice of the person to whom this question was sent and when we stick with the rules we left this free choice to everyone. When we interrupt the process and we was asked directly, we break this process. I like the subtle structure that helps us be respectful to each other. 
Um, I, I understand what you say. I was uh, on the queue. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I agree with, with that uh, in terms of this is a, an initial first step practice that we're doing here. So to stay within the practice, I think is very important. But the thing is, is uh, what I was hearing is you do have a choice of who you speak to. So I guess two people could just start speaking to each other because they have that choice. And sort of, so that's sort of a, and then they could exclude everyone else if they wanted to kind of play a game and not be inclusive. So, so that's sort of a, but they do, you have the choice to speak back and forth a few times too. So yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Guillaume, yeah, sorry, and Potem Guillaume. Mm -hmm. Guillaume and then Ben. Mm -hmm. Guillaume, uh, very quickly, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, I, I would like Bob to be here to, to explain because he was the facilitator and uh, there was a lot of respect. There was no interruption or it was very respectful. Um, that's it. it. It was only to have a more interactive instead of uh, I say all I have to say and then I stop and the other one says all you have to say. It, it, that's it. Ben? Yeah, I think there's things that we all value about the empathy circle practice. And I think one of the main ones is, you know, the space to be able to speak and be heard, like, you know, and having that uninterrupted. Um, and I think that has a relationship to the structure that we have here. Um, and I, yeah, um, that's, that's all I'll say, that's all I'll say. I wanted to, uh, okay, I will give you Edwin, I just want to do some comment. Well, this, uh, Guillaume says it was very friendly and very nice and very careful. When it is careful, but sometimes it becomes quick, strong, very nervous, and that will be destructive to somebody's kind of uh, position in the circle. When it's nice, it's nice but sometimes it's not nice. So it's better to keep those two. Yeah. Edwin. So, so yeah, it's like things can blow up and the structure keeps things, you know, less chance of blowing up. And it's, we're really trying to practice and we, I've done circles, you do several hours. And then it's that, so that mindfulness of, of awareness, that empathic awareness is sort of wired into everyone. And then you can even let go of the, structure you know after a couple hours and then it's really great but we're really here in these circles is really a practice there's a lot of new people you know who don't understand what's happening so it the uh, structure is yeah pretty important and i'm just noticing the time too yeah so. time is up i just